What's up, guys? Kevin Foos here with FoosforTrading.com. Today, I want to go over how to set up TC2000 in the same exact layout that I have it for when I trade. I get this question all the time, so I'm going to make a video for you guys to make yours look exactly like how I have mine set up here. Uh, it's a very good layout for a day trader. Um, you know, for the the reason I have this laid out here is because I can focus on one main play in addition to continually watch other plays here below. But, you know, say if I want to look at one stock, I have these two charts linked together with the daily chart as well as the intraday chart. So you can easily just pull up a full chart here. It's going to show you both the daily as well as the intraday on one side. Then I have individual charts down here that are not linked together. You, you notice how both these change at the same time and are easily linkable and then I can monitor anything else down here. So I'm going to show you exactly how uh, to set up a layout similar to this uh, in your own TC2000. So let's get rid of this uh, entire thing and we'll start from scratch. Uh, so this is the main window of TC2000. Something's going to open up. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it looks like whenever you open it up. I prefer to, you can build it within this, but uh, due to the fact that I make YouTube videos, uh, TC2000 is actually, in fact, a broker. I do not recommend them as a broker, but at the top of these, it always says paper. So everybody would always, there's always some stupid troll that says you are a paper trader, but uh, that's why it says fuck you TC2000 because it's either open a brokerage account or add a paper practice account. So you can paper trade within TC2000. I do not use them as a broker. I just use them for charting. Um, so that's why it says paper FU. So I create my own layout outside of the main window. So that's what I'm going to show you guys uh, as well here. So first thing you're going to do is just click this new button. We're going to start with a default chart. And then I'm going to go over here and float in new window layout so now we have the new window layout and i'm going to get rid of this over here bring this over to a separate window so now we're on this one single chart and we're going to build our chart template for a global chart that we use for everything so first thing we got to do is change this to candlestick charts right now it's in a uh, line chart so you go right click edit chart properties price style from here we're going to do candle stick not one color we're going to do open versus close and i like to have my candles white so i'm going to say the up bars are white i'm going to leave the bars at red um, everything else we're going to keep the exact same pre and post data i like to do only outside of normal hours this means that once the market is actually open it's not going to show you the pre and post market data this depends on what your preference are scaling we're going to leave it on arithmetic Comparisons, we're not going to have any. And for gradient, I like to have a gradient chart. I just think it makes it look a little bit sexier. So I click gradient and then I add in at the bottom the darkest gray. So it's going to make the chart pop. It's going to make the chart uh, price action pop a little bit more. So that's kind of what I prefer to uh, build my charts with, with this gradient look. So click the bottom one, make it the darkest gray, and you're good to go. Uh, from there, I just click OK. So now we have a good foundation for a base. From here, we need to add, obviously, volume. Volume. So I do add plot. You can also click this top left uh, plus button over here. So I'm just going to type in volume. Boom. Now we have volume. I like to, you know, for me, this looks like Christmas. And uh, nothing wrong with Christmas. Uh, I just think it's a little bit ugly so I like to spice things up a little bit so you actually go over to volume right click this and then edit I like my up bars to be bright blue a nice neon and then I like my down bars to be pink so a nice uh, little flare on those neon colors for volume from here guys we're going to go ahead and add the moving averages and the indicators that I use on the overlay for the actual chart so we do right click add plot I use the 13-day EMA, so I'm just going to type in MOV. It's going to pull up moving average exponential. Actually, it turned it did it for volume, so we're going to remove that. Uh, add plot here. Moving average exponential exponential. Okay, so you got to click the uh, <laughs> the actual uh, the ticker there. 
So now we have it. Default by goes to 50. So I'm going to click this up here. Go edit. I'm going to make this my 13 EMA. Uh, I have my 13 EMA set as yellow. Good to go. I'm going to do another one. Add plot here. Moving average. I have the 50 day moving average. Just a simple for the moving average for here. Okay, this is what I did wrong. You just click on the actual ticker cap E and that's going to add it to here. So then I'm going to click on this up here. Edit. It's 50. I like to use my 50-day uh, moving average as a pink. So there we go. And then I'm going to also add the 200-day exponential moving average. So again, just go to moving, exponential, click the ticker here, go up to here to edit this, change it to 200. And I have my 200-day as the bright blue. So I like to color match here with between my volume, my indicators, uh, my moving averages. So it just kind of is a nice themed look. Uh, I also use the RSI. So we're going to do the RSI. It's actually the Wilder's RSI. So now that's going to add this to the bottom. Uh, I'm going to change this color. So I'm going to go to Wilder's RSI, click this, edit. I'm going to have the plot style, plot color uh, pink. Make that look nice and sexy. Uh, and then as far as the red and green, you can leave this. So the line style um, up on top and bottom is red or blue. Uh, you can change that. I'll just leave it how it is. And you can also change the uh, right sides here, but I leave it as that. So there we have it. That's kind of my default look and layout for a chart. Um, now we can do... Uh, save chart and now we're gonna call this I already have it saved as foos4 um, so save it as whatever you want if you want to save this for the, your, your future layouts and from here guys we're just gonna start building out this chart uh, layout so what I like to do from here is just go up to this little indicator here um, we'll open this whole screen just click this and say duplicate so now you have this chart here, and I'm just going to go ahead and click this move key, click it, and I'm going to put it right next to it. So now I have my top two charts. And from here, I'm just going to keep duplicating new charts. I'm going to duplicate this one, and this one I'm going to move down below. So I'm going to click this. Instead of putting it right directly below each one of these, I'm going to create a new section down below these by clicking this bottom middle chart, bottom middle arrow. Boom, now I have charts down here. Now I'm gonna click and duplicate this one. I'm gonna move it next to this one right here. Now I'm gonna duplicate this again. I'm gonna move this one next to here. Now I duplicate it again. I'm gonna move it next to here. So now I have my four charts in the bottom that I like to watch. And then my two main charts on the top. So now uh, all these things are linked together, as you can see by this little blue indicator. So that's what we know is known as a symbol link. So if I change one chart, it's going to change all of them. But we obviously don't want to change everything and look at the same time. So these bottom ones, I'm going to say not linked. So click the blue S and change them all to gray or not linked. But we'll leave the two up top linked together so that we can, you know, look at whatever stocks we want. Down here, we can look at all our other plays that we are potentially looking at. Roku just got hammered. That was some Snapchat. So now uh, we have this nice looking uh, layout here that we can use to potentially make some money trading over here. I'm actually going to change this right side to daily chart up here. So we look at the daily, and then I like to use one-minute intraday charts for trading the open. So now we have a nice-looking layout here uh, to use, but we are not done quite yet, guys. I am going to add uh, the news. So over here, this is the, actually the main menu again, uh, notes and news. So I'm going to add uh, all live brief, and from here... I'm going to float this in a new window. So now this is actually floating. And now I can just click that move button. And I'm going to add it. There it is. 
move this right next to my top chart here. I don't want it to be super big. Uh, so I slide that over a bit, and now this is going to be linked to uh, anything that I pull up here. So RGSE, I pull up RGSE in these two tap main ones. It's also going to pull up here uh, in the in this side of over here because you want to obviously see what stocks uh, news is out when you're looking and trading a stock. But of of course over here we're not done. I also like to look at some data for each stock I trade. So we're going to do reports. We need to make a report. Uh, price and volume. Now we have this over here. I'm going to go ahead and move this below the news. Now this is over here. But I don't want to see a lot of this stuff here. So we got like uh, the name of the company. I don't care about any of this. So I'm going to hold shift, select everything, X out of this. And now I'm going to add field. I want to know, where is my other list? Uh, uh, we need latest float. Latest float is very important. So we're going to do latest float. Add as a value column, 7.5 million. I'm going to add the volume, how much volume this thing is traded, because this is going to show us the, uh, the ability to see how much volume a stock has traded over the actual float so this thing is rotating its float many times over being that the float is 7.5 million and this thing is traded 43 million so we got a float rotation on this stock very important information to know we're also going to do the short interest in addition to uh, the short percentage So this shows the short percentage of the float. So good to know all these things um, for looking at short squeezes, uh, all that good stuff. So there you guys have it. That is how I set up my TC2000 to trade like a pro. Booyah. <laughs>